Uh, you know, as we've been talking about, people are starting to line up for new mortgage programs because, once again, the system is probably going to get completely infiltrated. And a lot of people, are, you know, when they have a mortgage, think about how to save money. On the other hand, if you're starting to create a financial plan, not only are you trying to figure out how to save money, but also put yourself in a position to grow it. And Kathleen Miller is here from Miller Advisors. Welcome back, Kathleen. Thank you. Kathleen, you know, we talked a, a little bit before the show about trying to get this idea of where you are today, kind of creating this baseline. Tell us a little bit about some, you know, what people can do to maybe take that first step towards a financial plan. I think the first thing everybody needs to do is to do a net worth statement on themselves every year. So I would tell you, look at your net worth statement in December of 2010, and what is it now in December of 2011? And by doing that, listing your assets and your liabilities, you're going to know what's happened. I think the most important thing is if you own a stock or a bond, you have a value that's put on it every day. You have a mortgage, and you know what the, the balance is on that. But what, is your, what are you going to value your real estate at? And who's going to give you that value? Zillow. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> or realtors or whatever. And as the previous speakers have all said, it really depends on location, location, location. So do that net worth statement because when you do that, the questions you're going to answer for yourself, and it's really quite simple. The market went up. The market went down. You spent it or you saved it. One page on a piece of paper. So then you know where you are. So then you can come to these other experts that we've talked to today to say, where do you want to go? How do you position yourself to get there? And I work with clients also that have, uh, they've bought a million dollar house, they want a $500,000 mortgage, and they don't have income. They have investments. They could pay the thing, pay all cash. And trying to get the mortgage broker or bank to understand that they really do have income, they just choose where they want to take it from. And that is one of the tough parts, and it, you know that also goes back into that whole planning for the future, right? Because if you want to refinance and take advantage, actually, right now would be a great time if you think that you can actually save a lot of money by refinancing. File your tax returns so that you actually made some money last year, sure. or you could have started last year to take those profits so that you could show you earned money. Absolutely, it's a great time to do your tax return if you're if you are much higher in your income. But also, I think for a lot of people, they should really put their team together, as you said, and start early. They should really be talking to the mortgage broker, the financial planner, or the investment advisor, and, and the realtor to say, how do we position you to get what you want to get? So I have a client right now, and we're telling them, you need to rent this condo. The mortgage broker said you need three months of rental income. So you've got to get somebody to lease it so you have the rental income, so you can prove to the mortgage broker that you've got that. And you've got much higher income from last year to this year on your earned income. So position yourself. Do some strategizing and do it early. And it, it sounds a little bit like, you know, that's the beginning of this. But there's also the uh, element of, you know, going uh, understanding that point A of where you are and then determining what point B is. You know, looking out into that future and finding that better place you want to be at. Right. Well, you have to then quantify it and say, okay, I spent my emergency reserves last year, or I say I want to save for my retirement. And many people, does that mean you're contributing 10% of what you earn off the top into a 401k or a retirement plan? What does that really mean? It's quantifying that. And how do you, how do you um, list your goals not in just order saying I want, Not just saying yeah. I want to be rich. Yeah. It's not good enough. <laughs> right. And people got a double whammy in the last few years in the market. First of all, the market went down in the securities. The real estate market went down. The value of your house went down. So many of these people were buying, and they were using their house like an ATM. And then they got credit card debt. And so there are a lot of these people that just have a mess, and they really need to find out where they are before, and then say where they want to go and then start disciplining themselves to get there. I mean, it's easy to stick your head in the sand and say, well, I really want to buy this $1 million house on on uh, what in Kirkland or wherever if you could find it but then the question is do you have to sell your house and, and is it realistic that you can sell it for all of that and then do you qualify Kathleen we have a couple minutes left before we have to go to break but uh, you know I wanted you to talk a little bit about creating that roadmap too because is it is I mean whether it is can I qualify whether it is can I save that much to retire on time and talk a little bit about that well to me the first part is to establish your net worth so you say where you are 
And so you wanted your you wanted to put 10% away for your retirement. Did you do that last year? Did the market go up? Did the market go down? Is it still worth what you put into it? So it's that kind of thing saying, well, I still want to put 10% of whatever I earn into that, and it's coming up with a plan. Or somehow I got this credit card debt. What's the plan to get rid of the credit card debt? Or or figure out what somehow means. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean, how do you do it? And that means a commitment from the entire family. That means husband, wife, kids, this is where we are. This is how we are specifically going to get to where we want to be. Whatever the goal is, you start to quantify it. You know, last time you were here, and we do have to go to break here real quick, but you did talk about that difference in relationships with money. Right. That family commitment, I have not heard that before, but really having that conversation with everybody. Absolutely. I think you need to because do you want your 10 or 12-year-old to have a, 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 a newspaper route? Um, are we going to go out to dinner four times a week? Are we not going to go out to dinner? Are we going to participate in cooking? You know, what does it specifically mean? And so that's where I say, you said you wanted to do all these things last year. Well, the market went up, the market went down, you spent it, or um, uh, or you saved it. Well, I mean, discipline is such a huge part right. of that. And I right. imagine that you see a lot of people come in with these goals, whether it's lofty or even, right. you know, just very achievable. And that discipline of leaving your office and coming in the next year big difference it's a sobering moment and i think everybody should do a net worth if you have a child and he's out mowing lawns i think you should i should get 10 percent. it's probably my lawnmower whatever but i think you should have them start to do a net worth statement or you're putting money in your kid's college fund whatever it might be so that they begin to see this because if you want your kids to have values around money you got to show them it's very true and and they they do see as i have a one-year-old he knows everything i do he's uh He's starting to say some uh, interesting things, mostly a lot of no, 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 no. Right. So we, we're we waiting for him to say, okay, or yes. So, you know, we're <laughs> my wife and I, we just don't say no anymore. Right. Uh, Kathleen, thanks so much for joining us again. That's Kathleen Miller of Miller Advisors. When we come back, everybody is going to join us, and we're going to discuss a little bit about what people can expect in the future, positive or negative, in 2012. That was Kathleen Miller. My name is Ben Brashen. You're listening to Brashenomics. <laughs> 